Um, welcome to the Sunday session. My name's Steve Judge. I'm the host of the Football Network World's Weekly Discussion with football practitioners from around the world. Uh, today I'm joined by two top components in the world of loan management in Leicester City's Guy Branston and Say Olo Finjano of Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, before I uh, introduce you to the guys properly, let me just uh, share my screen with you and uh, give you a quick run through of what you can expect on the Sunday session today. So we will be discussing the challenges of organizing and monitoring low moves for young players. Um, like I say, we'll have uh, two presentations from, from the guys that will be, we'll be focusing on the organizing and monitoring of loans for our discussion. We'll delve a little bit deeper into uh, how they are identifying the loan needs of players and challenges then of finding a loan club for those players. And then in the second half, we'll, uh, we're looking at once those players go out on loan, how they monitor that player's performance while out on loan and, and understanding what level of support to give those players. There's some players who need to have a voice and someone around that they can lean on on an almost daily, weekly basis and those who kind of, yeah, prefer a hands-off approach. So, uh, yeah, how the guys go about understanding the needs of the players that they are looking after. But so we can find out a lot more about that. Let me start introducing you to the guys. And we'll uh, start with Guy, Guy Branston, player loan manager at Leicester City. Uh, how are you, Guy? How are you, how are you doing today? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, really good. Really, um, really had a good weekend, good week. Been busy, busy with lots of games and just uh, looking forward to doing this with you, mate. Hey, brilliant. So, good to hear you're uh, getting, getting out and about. Uh, this this time, but I wondered, yeah, just now, probably just to give a a little bit more of an overview of your your football pathway that's led you to uh, your current role at Leicester City. Uh, ex player, um, went down the route of a lot of clubs in the EFL. I've gone out on loan myself, um, 19 clubs and 26 moves. So, I think me and you did a paper report a few years back called the Lone Ranger. So, it's quite fitting that now I've got this job. Had a good opportunity of getting into coaching pretty early, around about 28. Come back to Leicester, did my badges, um, coached whilst I was playing non-league, um, did my B licence at Leicester and uh, had a, a really, really successful time coaching for about eight or nine months. Had a, an amazing group, which I'll explain a bit later on. Um, uh, that would have been, yeah, 28. So going into that, finishing off my career, 35. Went straight into recruitment after setting up some apps and websites regarding for player recruitment and did some scouting, did some uh, work for Plymouth, work for John Sheridan, and then got a nice county role as uh, chief scout, head of recruitment, stayed there for 18 months, went into non and did the football operations overseeing the, the football club, working as the first team coach, the under-18s manager, because non-league, you do various roles, community manager, you name it, I was doing it administration and then got another job at um, Chesterfield Football Club as director of recruitment took that uh, ended up the interim manager within three months and was was sacked a week later so these things happened and, and as soon as I left that job 2017 uh, Leicester City rang me up and asked me to come down and be one of their coaches again funny enough working with the the 2008 group have now come through to become professional so I ended up taking back over a lot of the players that I originally coached at 10 and 11 and now coming into the first team group, which was Harvey Barnes, Hamza Child, Rare, them sorts of the types I'd originally worked with. And now in the first team group and then some of them who I actually worked with in that group in 2008 and now out alone. So had a good record uh, time with the 16s, 18s and 23s and then went into uh, the loan management role after being offered it from uh, the coach's um, perspective and they wanted to mix the, the two roles and I did a bit of coaching on the pitch and did a bit of coaching off the pitch anyway. And they said, look, can you take predominantly the loan lads? So we want to start increasing it slightly. And we started sending a few more lads out and I started looking after them whilst they were out and coaching them and working with them off the pitch and stayed in this role now for two or three years now. That's where I'm currently at. No. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of uh, yeah, rich and varied uh, experiences leading leading up to that, which I'm sure we'll uh, delve into in the next hour and a bit. Um, I'm sort of bringing your co-presenter uh, for, for today, uh, Say Olofinjana at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, Say, how, how are you today? 
Very well, thank you, Steve. Good morning, good afternoon. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, good to have you with us. Um, yeah, similar to to uh, just ask with Guy, um, sort of share a little bit of the details of your of your footballing pathway that's kind of led you to the current role of player loans and pathway manager at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Thank you very much. I'm not sure I've had a, 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 as glamorous a career as, as Branson has had. I was almost jealous while he was rolling out all the clubs he's played for and all the things he's done and what have you. But again, I did my fair share. And um, well, obviously, I'm Nigerian uh, originally. Played in Nigeria as well as studied while I, while I played. I had the privilege of playing for my country for 10 years. Played for Wolves. I work for Wolves now. But I was at Wolves as a player for four years before I moved on to, to other clubs. And I came back with a view to being a sporting director, that would be the end goal for me, is what I'm passionate about, what I want to do. But in doing that, I mean, I came back to Wolves and I, I mean, I started as a coach um, with, with the 23s, uh, with, with Scott Sellers at the time. And then the opportunity to, for the role came up. We've, been, we've never had one, one before. Uh, so I mean, even if I say so, I'm the, I'm the one and only loans manager that the club has ever had, something I'm very, very proud of. And I, why did I take the role? I took it because um, I think it's a very, very good preparatory ground for sporting directors in doing speaking with agents, um, doing contracts, helping the next generation of players with the, with the experience you've gathered over the number of years, as well as um, making sure they get what they need while they're out on loan on a temporary basis with a view to either coming to play for, for the football club when they do well, or we'll find them careers elsewhere. So pretty much. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah, it'd be uh, interesting to yeah, learn a little bit more, I think, towards the back end of, of the uh, of the discussion where where you think this role could possibly take you in the game. It's sort of interesting here, that sort of thought there, that ambition there. It's maybe it's something that leads you into like a sporting director's sort of role. But uh, yeah, I don't know whether we, before we get there, say I'll uh, hand over the screen to you fully for your for your presentation, which I think will just be uh, focusing on how you at Wolverhampton Wanderers, how you go about identifying loan opportunities for your young players. Thank you very much. I shall share my screen, but before I start that, please, you might be, you might hear the odd noises every now and again. Hmm. The joys of working from home, so I do apologize in advance. Yeah, so that's me there. Um, um, and this is what we're doing today. But I'll just um, start start with that. Um, the first thing you do when you want to send players on loan is to identify who needs a loan and why. Um, are the first team players on the fringe that are not getting enough game time? Has there been a recruitment within the within the football club that that, that means that they will they, they become, for lack of a better phrase, surplus to requirements? And on the back end of that, I need to go elsewhere and then develop and probably put in place what the managers want, what the manager wants with a view to them having to come back or actually finding them careers as well elsewhere. Uh, I know for the sake of what we're doing today, it's more about the young players. So I'm going to speak a little bit more about the young ones that are graduating from the academy. Uh, sometimes we have them as, I mean, as young as 16, 17 needing loan for, for whatever reason. Uh, yes, they, while they're minors, if they're that young, what we tend to do is make it educational. Educational in the sense that we don't generally make them go too far away from the football club such that we can put adequate monitoring ar ar around them. It's a lot of the time about, it, it, predominantly for players like that, players that we've had from ages eight, nine, and the, the, the Wolves is all they've ever known and sort of getting away from Wolves a little bit to go and taste life elsewhere is always ideal. So for, for players like that, it's not going to be necessarily about playing 35 games a season. As a matter of fact, we always do short loans for them so they can go very quickly, quick support, and we can bring them back being first loan. Yes, for the 23s, will be guys that, that played in the 23s football, uh, but need, need, need the next development. Again, is it that we are, is it for, for recruitment's sake when we recruit the players into the football club that have um, taken their place that way, or we, we feel we found a, a player that might be ready to play for the first team um, in the next six months, within, within a year, that may need to come into the training place to develop and then be part of the first team and then prepare them that way. That will then leave room for some of the training players to want to go out on loan and then 
begin to find careers for themselves? Is it a pathway? Is it one above them in the first team, like I explained, or is it one coming through? Are they going to block someone's pathway that might then leave room for, for players to go on loan? Again, it could be level finding. You know, you need to find your level technically, tactically, physically, and mentally, especially. Because a lot of the academy boys, even if I say so, and I'm sure Guy will be any witness, are very, very uh, technically good. Tactically, they are getting there, still need work, but predominantly what the, what the loan gives them it's a physical and mental side of the game. And when you begin to play with men and I mean jobs on the line, three points at mistake, relegation and promotion, and all the law, you you you, you got to be on your game, and that's a big part of it. Is it for further development? Some some fall between the cracks, like we like we say in football. Uh, for example, a lad that have played twenty years football for for two seasons, he can't quite make the first team uh, grade yet. So he, how do we find them alone to go and? find a way to bridge the gap in such a way that they can put in place, show the manager what they can do on loan or whatever the, whatever the level, uh, and then either come back or find a career for themselves. Is it, is it, is it, is it about maturity? Uh, very, very good player that we, we may think can play for our first team, but he's immature. And while the, the Premier League is, can be unforgiving at times, in fact, a lot of the times, you don't want to throw a young kid in who is not ready, so loan might be a, an exit route to go and develop, to go and know what being in the first team environment is all about. Or is it for exit strategy? You know, clubs change every now I mean, every time. Philosophies change every now and again as well. Manager comes in, players that have been, you've been thinking will come good to play for the first team. The manager could change the style and the, the style could mean that the player does not fit into the philosophy. So straight away, you're going to find avenue for such players. And generally, that's what we look at to sort of determine, amongst other things. I mean, I can give you a list of 20 things on there that didn't put on there that, that determines who goes out and loan and why. Just, just to put a bit of structure to, to that, would be, I mean, from the academy, it goes out and loan, is it coming back to the first team or is it going back out on loan again? If there's no pathway to go to the first team, definitely you can always find an exit for them, uh, finding them good opportunities, or generally speaking, well, it's about going out on loan and then finding that exit, exit route, like I said. But very, very few players do not need loans. So it's not, it's not, your, it's not your seasonal thing. You, that's essentially where we want to get to. As, I mean, as, as, as clubs, not just Wolverhampton now, as academies, we want to get to a place whereby our players can go straight from the academy to the first team. But the gap within the first team is getting so big now that Academy players will always need something in between to go and to go and find a career for themselves somewhere, and then do well, and then come back or, or find themselves uh, a career, like I said earlier. So once we are, once that identification process is is, is done, is, is then preparation. How do we prepare them before they go out uh, on loan? Very much unlike what used to happen years back, whereby we just it's just um, an off the cuff thing. Players become surplus requirement, they go out on loan and they go and find out for themselves what the loan is all about. Now we're stripping it back a layer or two into making sure we prepare them best we can uh, with, with, this, with this very, very good team. So I sit in between all, those, all of these guys and we look at all the things the player might need to be prepared to when they're going to go out on loan. Is it a young one? Is it doing education? What does education, education look like? And we link the education he's been getting from us to, to when it goes out on loan, all those songs we need to start talking about. Is it medicine, does he have an, an underlying uh, medical requirement or medical need that the club is giving the player or, or players at, the, at this point in time, the club is going to go to, if, if it goes out on loan, would they be able to carry that on? That would be a major consideration of what we do as well. Um, the video analysts definitely put, the, put the, the, the clips together, preparatory to showing clubs and then making sure that we, we, we market the player best we can. Um, Player care, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Psychologist is another one we use for the boys, just to sort of make sure we prepare them mentally. Um, players get very, very high sometimes. You need to bring them down, give them a reducer, like I say in football. If you think you're the next best thing, yes, you still have layers of learning to go through, and we need to sort of find that, that medium. If they are too down, we, need to, we, we, we suck them up, not, for lack of a better phrase, not blowing smoke up their asses, uh, but in making sure you 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 help them believe in themselves and you show them all the good traits they've got and where they can get to. So the, the role of the psychologist is very, very 
important. Of course, coaching goes on on a day to day basis, but again, even that gets streamlined into going into the nitty gritty of what they need. And what do I mean by that? When you, for example, you've got a very good centre back who is young, you and you know, I mean, guy again will bear me witness with this. How many clubs would take a young centre back and trust them to play as centre back? So you, you might have to sort of train him to be to play as a left back or a right back in the meantime, because that's where they always start from. And then the the, the, the the totality of what the right back needs is a little bit different to what the centre back would need. Obviously, you need to be physically capable. So that education, touching on the sports scientist now, would then start straight away. Apart from your normal training, we'd make sure we take you and get you ready for that particular role with, with data to back it up. What does it look like to be a, a, a right back in a League One or a championship, for example? Then we need to start putting those, those things in play and making sure the player gets all the physical um, all the aerobics it needs to sort of maybe be able to cope at that level. We don't want them to get to that level and then find out. Safeguarding is a big one. You know, what kind of background? I mean, do the kids, where did, what, what's the background of the kid? Where, what, what was the environment? What's, uh, what did they go through growing up? How then do we then look after them such that we don't put them in an, in an environment where they don't, uh, where they will struggle? Because I mean, if we're not careful, all you look at is football, football, but again, be, be beyond football, there's, there's a human being. I mean, you've got to look after the human being. The player care role is a very, very key one. And, and like I said, it starts from before these young players go out on loan and, and things like accommodation. Do you live on your own? Can you actually live on your own? If you've been living in, in a host family, can we get you to start living on your own? Can we support you through that process if you're capable? If not, we need to have a type of conversation with the clubs they are going out on loan. It's not so much about Getting everything right is about having the knowledge so that we know what to say to clubs when these when these boys go out. Is it paying our bills? We need to help them through the process. Don't give the bill to the player care manager to solve for you. You start solve, solving that problem for yourself while you're with us because that's what you're going to do when you go out on loan. And then helping them through the process. Can you cook? If you cannot, there are sessions. We've got a nutritionist within the within the football club to help with that, so you can learn to sort of at least get by to learn to cook for yourself. If you cannot cook, again, it's a different conversation. If you can, definitely, it's a good thing. If, if not, we find a way ar around that. Can you drive? You know, if, if you need to take your, to your driver's less, I mean, license before you go out on loan, even better. If not, where you're going to live when you go out on loan shouldn't be too far away from the, from the stadium and from the training ground. That, so it, these are all the things we, 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 we don't, the player care must begin to look, look at once we make that identification. Again, it could be a, lang a language thing for those that have been going abroad. Not all players. I was just saying to guy before you guys came on, that I mean, I've got 17 players alone this season alone. And of the 17, I've only got four in England. The rest are abroad. So if you're going to go abroad, you just speak the language. Is it, is there, is there an English speaking language? The country you're going to go to, or actually, are you actually from that sort of environment? How do you begin to cope? And then we make sure we put all, this thing, all these things in place with a view to helping the players settle in and we don't we leave any stone unturned. The, the other considerations must um, go hand in hand with the preparation. So contract, we want to make sure we our contract with the player is worth the time, the player gets what he wants, we get what we want in terms of the length of contract prior to them going out. Then on the back end of putting in place all the above that I spoke about that the team is going to put in place, we then begin to sort of look at clubs potential club to suit what the, what the need of the player is. Now, again, what level do you want them to go to? Based on the, based on the player's attributes, is he one that will be suited to go abroad? Is he one that will be, need to sort of stay in the country? What level should we, should we place the player? Is it a championship one? Is it a premiership, premiership one? Is it league one? Is it league two? All those conversations we start, uh, we start having straight away. What kind of environment do we want him to go to? What's the system of play do we want him to play? Is it one that we value so much that we'll come back and play for our first team uh, someday? Then the system of play matters because we want them, we don't want them to go and play in a different system and then confuse them that way. Is it one that we don't think will come and play for our first team but is still a good, decent enough player? So may, system doesn't really matter then, but we channel where, wherever the player is going to go to suit is the player's strength that way style of management, how is the team is going to go to, what sort, of, what sort of management do we want to see from the learning club? What style, what's, 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 the, what's the size, what's the style? Is he, is he, one, is he a manager that's been, that handled young boys before? 
doesn't know how to sort of cope with them or is he one that just very, very result oriented and doesn't care about the young one, all those things we need to sort of um, uh, look into. Uh, positional evaluation, if we look into the squad of players, the players are going to go to, is it, does he have one up ahead of him? Or is he, is he one that is going to go in there and play a lot? If there's one ahead of him and it's going to be a first loan, it could be one that you don't have, you don't have to play for this game. It could, if you give him 15, 20 games, it might, it depends on where the player is on that ladder of experience or that ladder of development that determines what clubs we decide to sort of, uh, sort of um, uh, take them to. Uh, nutritional education, I, I mentioned earlier, as a matter of fact, we, we have a rag rating, we call it a rag rating, red, amber, green, designed for the, for the player to, to show us where they are with their, with their nutrition. Is it one that can get by green? Is it one that is okay, can still survive? Is it one that is a red? If it's a red, definitely, we need to make sure we do something about it. Either get them the education before they go or find a solution while they're out on loan. Of course, obviously, agents and parents are going to be very key to, 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 to everything that we do to make sure we carry them along with all these processes so that nothing hits them by surprise and everyone gets carried along and everyone knows exactly what's, what is to be done for the, for the player. So, and after all of this, and the club is selected and the players go out on loan with all this information, this will be done in isolation, by the way. The players always, they are always involved in all these processes. It's, they, they are going to be the one to go on loan. They will be the one to sort of stay in their loaning club. So they, it becomes imperative for them to be part of this process. So pretty much, thank you very much. Thanks, Say. Hey, yeah, say so, uh, a nice comprehensive overview of uh, what, uh, what takes place when you're kind of organizing and putting together that loan for a player. Um, you know, we'll, uh, bring in, uh, Guy and, and see, uh, what the role then transitions to, uh, once the player is, is out, out on loan in terms of monitoring your players progress and the levels of support that you, uh, try and put in place for them while at a loan club. So yeah, Guy, the, uh, the screen is all yours. Unmuted, yeah. Thank you for that. That was excellent, by the way. I really enjoyed that. It's great to see uh, different clubs' perspectives on on my my role as well, and the stuff that you're allowed to do, the stuff that I'm not allowed to do, and things like that. It's interesting to see where what sort of levels you have, which I think we'll go into discussion later. But when I'm um, overviewing my role at the club, it's slightly different to to obviously at Wolves, but I, I think it's different at most clubs. You know, I think everyone has their own little uh, identity at the football club. And with me, I, I kind of see myself as a coach as well. Um, their agent, uh, administrator, you know, player care, uh, an analyst. And I, I've got all them, I suppose, job titles within my own role because, you know, this is just me doing it. So I've had to learn uh, how to cook, if you know what I mean, all these different roles. It's been a been a difficult um, upbringing, but it's also a role that they want me to do. So I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the, the hands-on and in-depth approach that I've got at Leicester City. I would, um, I would say our cycle looks like this, um, and I'll just briefly go through it because you've touched on a lot of stuff. We identify and categorise pretty early players and kind of know their pathways from a very early age. Every player has a different story. We know this. Uh, we identify clubs, again, very early on with management and setups to identify types of clubs that we like to send our players to, but also like the idea of playing at different levels for their progression and their pathway. We identify styles of play, which we've mentioned, and uh, analyse the styles of play and see, try and see similarities in what we've got. But again, every player's story is different, so they do need different styles of play to progress further on. We might need to go and have the rough and tumble of the, the lower leagues for a defender and vice versa. You might need to go into a high league to go and play out the back. And again, centre forwards is different, wingers are different, things like that. Identifying players that, that fit the club, we want them to be successful. We, we, you know, we don't set out alone to be unfulfilling. We want the kid to come away with a, a happiness about it that it's worked for him. And, and we try and prepare all that beforehand to give him the best opportunity. 
there isn't always an amazing amount of loan opportunities for these lads. Uh, we know that every window, but you know the, the preparation and and the um, organisation beforehand that goes into it, the details that go into it, need to be explained to the boy, need to be explained to the player that, that there could be complications with certain issues, and you need to have the clear picture. I think um, we then cover the player when he's out a lot. We go into do different depths of detail um, from like we speak about in the next slide. Discussions with the club constantly going on, monitoring the club, monitoring their, their staff, helping us to help them. We speak to our staff and share our staff's details. Like we said, sports performance, doctors, uh, analysts, all get the information that they need to then collect the data and information they need, which I'll show on the next slide. When players are out on loan, we're monitoring them. I go and see them whenever it's obviously safe and sound and make sure I cover my back with the opportunity to, you know, go and uh, have face-to-face, -face, um, which I've been able to do, but again, in a, a safe environment, which has been the crowd. And um, with no crowd in the stands, I've been able to see some lads at say, social distancing. And I've been able to get to the games, which has been fantastic for me. Um, I've got nine out at the minute, two, two out the country. So I've not been able to go to Belgium because of obviously travelling restrictions, but I've been able to go to all the lads that have been in this country and it's been fantastic to, to watch them, see them and, and, and now luckily start to be safe and sound and, and meet them with a, a good amount of distance, trust me. Um, professional development and, and the professional end of, for them is, you know, where they go next and I have to discuss that with them. I have to now in April, I have to start discussing where they're at for next season and, and had that discussion with our bosses and our sporting directors and um, director of football, sorry, the terminology we've got here. And that cycle carries on throughout the season, throughout the different months and throughout the, the, the I would say, the, the cycle of the, 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 the whole season. When the lads are out, again, we're talking about pre-loan, we're preparing them. We've got their files, their CVs, which is the top one on the left-hand side. And um, we're monitoring them at games, we're collecting data on them to prepare them to go out on loan. And we're giving them feedback about their preparation for them. During, you know, we're monitoring, monitoring them again. We're constantly collaborating and collecting information on them. Like I said about the administration role that I do. And we, we know we're feedbacking and giving everyone feedback within the football club. Uh, post loan, you know, we then start bringing them back into the building, start breaking down their data and seeing where we might have gone right or where we might be able to develop further with the EPP. And also to go through the day and see where we can have a like sort of a debrief and try and understand uh, the positives and negatives with the lad, but also with the members of staff. So we can use that template, hopefully for another player later on down the line. Um, what we can learn out on loan, in, in my opinion, in preparation for, for loans is, you know, staff mentalities about loan players. I have to deal with a lot of staff comments and, and a lot of staff's um, misunderstanding misunderstanding of leagues, uh, discussions with players as well about misunderstanding of leagues and how difficult it is to be a professional footballer in the grand scheme of things, let alone what league they think they can play in or what league the agent thinks he can play in. And, and these are the discussions we have and even speak to parents and that's, you know, mental biases from, from staff members. Respecting the staff, you know, they've got, they might have more knowledge than me. You know, understanding the different levels of, of, of their thoughts and, and the snapshot thinking, positive or negative. So I discuss with the player as well and try and give them as much information as they can before they go out about the certain levels they're going to go into and the staff members they might connect with or the players they might connect with. And I try and understand what's in the building for them. As soon as they walk in, it's not a shock and it's not um, a negative uh, first step into the building. Physical levels of, of the players. You know, I try and watch them before they go out to understand their levels of fitness uh, and also understand their body language and understand if they're, they're happy with going out alone and just be around them a bit more. And again, uh, the ability is going to hopefully shine through if you, you, you're ticking all their boxes and, and making sure that the, you've got everything in place to prepare them for their loan. I think uh, in an ideal world, you spend more time with the player before he goes out. But again, you have other players to look after. Um, you can see this okay on the right hand side of the screen. Is it is it full screen on everyone else's? Is it okay, Steve? The right hand side. You see the whole thing, the blue. Yes, I can see. Oh, fantastic! That's just where my where my camera. Oh, I can move that. It's fine. Uh, sorry about that. Um, more time with the coaches as we prepare for them to go out alone. 
and more discussions with the uh, multidiscipline team. That'd be my ideal add-on to lads preparing to go out alone. Um, during, again, club staff, now the club staff of the loan club, um, the mental biases again, respecting different levels, you know, lads are maybe now starting to get found out at that level or starting to excel pretty quickly at that level. So like uh, we spoke about earlier about just keeping their, their calmness about the level, uh, good or bad, trying to make them concentrate on the positive and negatives that's happening to them um, and making sure that the player understands the, the, I would say the level continuous left through the season is huge. You know, don't get too excited before the window opens in January thinking you're going to go and play in the Premier League. Try and see out the season with the club that you're at. Try and also understand that this is a great opportunity for you to, you know, get some real good game time under your belt and try and keep them understand with all the different aspects that when it, if it does go wrong, you know, there's always a learning curve in there somewhere for you. You know, maybe you're learning about the dress room. Maybe you're learning about living away from home. Maybe you're learning about dealing with uh, agents calling you up all, all the time now because you now have an opportunity to put to be on the um, the showcase of a league and you're the one of the main players. So there's all these different things to think about. Players' levels of fitness, we're constantly monitoring uh, when they're out, during. You know, we're constantly speaking to the players again when they're out, during. It's so important that we have that contact. They can call me at any time with 24-hour access. I think that's some of the, the calls that my missus has seen me take with some of these lads has been, been good. And also, she's not been too happy as well. So there's all them conversations to be had with these lads when you're, you're having good good games, driving back in the car and taking opportunities to chase them up to see if they're in the team, to understanding the run they're on as a player for the first time or, you know, it's now their second season out alone and they're experienced pro. And it's great to see that they've got that maturity about them and you can leave them to it for a 10-day stint or a two-week stint and then they call you or you call them. So performance levels and KPI based on their positions constantly monitored with the EPPP, but also with um, <clears throat> our own level of, of progress with an, and our own level of administration. I would say uh, when, when they're out alone again and, and we've brought them back, we then start to do the review, start to spend a bit more time with them as people. And like, like, like this is, is player-centered, the whole thing. You know, it's all about them. I work for them, basically. You know, it's it's there. I'm probably I probably angle mine a bit more of a player care, player loan manager role because I don't do a lot of the administration in preparation for the loan to go out, the negotiations and the, the having to deal with with the other stuff. But I kind of aim mine at you know we we work for them. Can we help them make this successful? What do they need? And learning from I think the review part of this is huge because you can then take that again, that template to another lad who's got similarity problems and got another opportunity of, of coming back and being happy about his loan or being negative about his loan. So I think the review end is, is huge. And I want the lads to be, you know, understanding that there was, was positives and negatives, but make sure they, they, they the cold reality of, of the levels might have caught them out, which isn't a negative, but it's now understanding that, you know, we might need to go lower or go higher or understand that we might need to put them into a different sort of scenario, even playing abroad sometimes because of their, their technical ability might outweigh their physical ability for the leagues, the, the, the UK leagues that are physical and, and, and also technical. So it's, it's understanding where their mental states are about their loans. And you have to spend so much, so much time trying to get them to really open up. And, and I think that's, that's why I come from a stance of I work for these guys is because they instantly know they've got somebody and they instantly know they can tell me stuff and they instantly know that I'll work with them because I've been in probably in their situation out on loan because of my background. And they, they get that security that, that they also know me from being around the club and having that feel that, that, you know, he's out there to make my career better, regardless of how the loan's gone. So they, they get that positivity from me. And I think that ability wise, you've got to look to have they improved in some way or form. And the ability, obviously, has got to improve. It's got to have been, a, 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 I would say, a successful loan. And, and again, there's so many KPIs, in my, in my opinion, what you can look to a loan to actually be a successful loan. You, again, you deal with the staff. They may say, oh, he's done this or he's done that or it hasn't worked out in there, blah, blah, blah. But there's so much stuff you can take from a loan, even if he hasn't played. And, and I believe that. You know, He's learned off the field as much as he's learned on the field. Fair enough, if you get both 
aspects covered. I think it's a fantastic loan. And I think there's a lot of positives to come away from it. And I think that, you know, the club ends up adding serious amounts of value to the, to the, the asset that they have. And he is an asset. And we've added a serious amount of empathy and, and understanding about this player to the club, uh, the loan club and the league. And the players also learn a lot from us that we care and we're bothered about him. And he comes away with, with that sort of feeling. And that's one of my biggest happiness is out of the loan. If I can give him that sense that the club's there for him in thick or thin, in good or bad, then I've done a big, big part, a big chunk of my role as the loan's manager. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Guy. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, I think, yeah, the big the big thing that seemed to be continuously repeated there is uh, getting the players and ever all the staff is understanding understanding the levels. Levels that a player is going to a level that a a player is at, which I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get into a lot more detail as we progress. But um, I think we'll start with a nice, easy question um, for, aimed at both of you. So whoever wants to jump in, or, or I think say touched on it a little bit in his presentation. But what are the age groups you're dealing with 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 the loans? We are we going as young as 16 and up to what around 23, or is that the the general sort of cut off point? Well, I'm, I'm I'm unmuted, so I'll start. Um, I had I had a, a, a scholarship um, start. A young lad started his scholarship and didn't play for the team, the the under 18s, and they went out and played uh, for another team, which is a, a you know technically a loan, um, but it's it, it was a successful time for the lad. Went out, so he was under 17. I personally wouldn't want to send out. Um, 16 year olds or, or anything like that you know uh, I don't think that the, the age group's fitting um but if it's a young lad who's coming to a scholarship who's been in around it for six eight months you know already been at the club for you know a good amount of time and he needs to get some game time but can't get in the youth team then there's I can see the the positives in that I can see the positives but mainly 18, 19, some, some, you know, some need to do a year's pro to understand the football club, you know, and again, it's every player is different in every case. So there's a, there's not a set age and there's not a set um, negative age, if I'm honest. It's just, you, you put that in the MDT and crack on with the meetings about with the group and discuss if, if it was the right time for the right lad. And say, is there, is there then like a, a higher age group level where, there comes a point where, all right, guys, you've been around the game long enough. You need to sort out your own loans. It's not, it's not for us to do anymore. Um, well, like, like I said, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's down to the individual. Uh, the 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 loans department, the loans role is not um, always a one cut fits all scenario. You always have to look at the individual and what the what the individual needs. Um, generally speaking, for me, the first loans are are very much educational. A lot of them are disasters because a lot of the boys have a false sense of worth. They have a false sense of evaluation of where they're at. As much as you can, you, you, we try and educate them within the, within the club to sort of let them know this is what it looks like until they actually go out. They don't have that real experience of what it looks like to, to play professional football. And that for me is, is what, they go, what they're going to do. Yes, while I may not say to them, You've got to go to League One and League Two or wherever you want to go in, going out on low as a first no need to go and play 30 games. I, I I know a lot of the time they won't play as many games. It's about learning to be in an environment, it's about learning to cope with the physical demand, but more importantly, there's the professional nature of what that will give them. There are guys with in the in the changing room that will need to sort of pay their mortgage. So 30 points is important. And if you're coming in from a Premier League side. And you think you can just roll around and stroll around and do what do your bit and then go home? These guys will tell you that's not the other day, and that for me is a learning that they will need. They might then come back a different uh, player, a different person, which is what you hope, because a lot of these boys can play football. No, no doubt about that. But it's who they need to be in that environment that they need to learn. With regards to the question and the age, age shouldn't be a barrier. You know, if a player is sixteen year old and you know. He can be good at 21, but he needs to sort of understand professional football. If he's capable, 
like I said in my presentation, I wouldn't mind such a player going out on a short-term loan. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have him there for too long, otherwise you kill him mentally. But again, you want to you want that dose of education for him with a lot of support. And it's going to be within the locality of where we are based, such that we, if we need to go there every day, every two, three days to go and have a look at how he's doing and check on him to make sure we put the support mechanism around him. I, I don't mind that because the sooner you get that done and then get the player on site to, get, to subject himself to the education that is required to get him to where he needs to get to, the better. Oh yeah, I think we can. Uh, I would say yeah, we'll certainly go a lot deeper down down that that pathway um, in terms of how you kind of manage that levels of expectation, the realities and the levels of support. I just wanted yeah to then begin get the conversation then rolling. Um, just where the full process begins. So like we're now in kind of early mid April. You probably still got guys out on loan, but in terms of looking towards next season and, and guys going out on loan, where does where does that process begin? Is it something you're already looking at or that will not begin until you're probably late July, August time? I think um, we, we will have pre-discussions about it, um, understanding where some of them might go this summer. Um, but I think that the majority of lads will be back in the building pre-season the levels of testing and the levels of, you know, uh, what would you say? The, the feeling they get about the clubs needs to be still there. So getting them out before the end of the season and, and moving them on to next season with not a proper pre-season in, in their legs from Leicester City would be, I think, something I'm not, I'm not seeing at the club. I'm not saying you can again. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. And then you'd be preparing that loan pretty much, you know, now to understand that the next loan will be this and, and you'll be talking to the players. So I've not dealt with that. You know, I usually deal with our loans in and around. I get the picture now, say April, May, um, that certain players will probably go out. I start working on it May, June. And by July, I've got offers, offers and opportunities and interest for various players. And, and then I pass it on to my director of football to deal the nitty gritty bits. But after that, the lads are passed to me and we, you know, we, we go on with it and it's fantastic. It's a good little system. Yeah, very, very similar to yourself. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, no, very similar saying. to yourself, um, uh, Guy. It's the, same, it's the same procedure, really. While you cannot um, say 100% that this pool of players will be going out, you start the process now. You have a fair idea of who you think will go, might go out, depending again on recruitment because you football always surprises you one way, one way or another. There are guys within the system that even even the, the guys in the hierarchy don't want to do nothing about but if something happens that means a player leaves and then you, there's replacements. It could be one that you're looking to go out alone that gets the opportunities that requires happy days. It could be one that is thinking, well, I'm going to be in the first team and something happens, another player gets brought in that needs to go out very quickly. That will change. But within all of those, uh, the core elite players, if you like, that you're looking at preparing to to to, us and get, you know, to go out on loan. And again, it's always an exciting time because straight away, how we do th th these things are, during pre-season, the guys that have been out on loan come back straight away and the ones that are looking to get out, join them straight away. We have a loan separate group for pre-season. We don't join them with our 23s or with our first team. They're always separate. And straight away, they begin to have a feel for the professionalism of the players that have come, out, come, out, come back from loan. And then the ones that are ready to go out on loan then begin to sort of learn even before they go out. So you split your, your lads up? We do. So we always have loans group. Lads coming out from loan, um, from loan and preparing for their next loan and the next ones that we potentially will be going out on loan, join them. Of course, it overlaps every now and again with the tournament freight and with the first team. But predominantly, we want to keep their, set, their focus a little bit separate because the focus of the 23 is always different from the world. Lads going out on loan. It's me personally, I think it's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. And and my my feelings on the, the, the from putting my coaching hat on, you can then do sessions regarding League Two, League One, how it looks, you know, the, the pictures that you can paint before they go out again from the experiences from the lads who are coming back into the building, say from League One, and then feed them and, and re-educate the players and do part of your your job cycle by educating them before they go out. And the education on and off the pitch is huge from that. So I can see a massive benefit for that. And 
I don't uh, I don't have that capacity, even though I have enough grass. Um, I don't have the capacity to put that in place, but I, I would definitely uh, consider that. I think it's fantastic. Uh, we've done it. We've done it now the last two or three years, and it, I mean, it's worked. It's worked wonders. Just from yeah, the focus no, and the mental it. viewpoint, yeah. we get them separate coach. You know, you, you don't get coached by the first team staff or the twenty-three staff or the eighteen staff. You have only your own separate coach. That his job is to prepare you best he can for to, to go out and and, and do. So it takes that like, player yeah. pathway to another level, doesn't it? Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's face it. The guys that are coming back on loan from loan. And they're looking to go out again. Their pathway is not development. 23 is development. Yeah. You know, you are going to actually play in the league and then produce results. So I, th- I think the challenges are different and we, it's got to be treated as such. Now, I've seen that mental side where lads have come back into the 23s and they're disappointed. They're now playing with young lads. You know, and, and that that mentality to go and now play with, with, with basically 16, 17-year-olds because they're training with the 23s. Which they, you know they used to train with men, and they see the lads over the the, the other side who are playing with the first team, and you got you know in Diddy tackling you compared to a sixteen year old tackling you, it's, it's, it's a huge yeah. difference, and that that continued development is huge, and that's why you know I, I see a massive benefit. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. It's the first time I've heard that. It's the first time I've heard that. So you're you're uh, forward thinking at Wolves, which is uh, I better crack on with my lot and tell them. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that their, 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 their um, guy you're seeing it then as a full full cycle. It's not only something that you're there in preparing the players, but also you know if those players are coming back and not going straight into a kind of first team environment, that it's maybe in a certain instance to certainly if it's late season and you don't want guys who've been playing at a senior level for a season then coming in like you say with an under twenty threes and they're playing against. Predominantly 18-year-olds. Yeah, well, it happened to me. I, I I was a player and I felt that that mental shift when I got back into the building at Leicester. You know, I was nowhere near the first team I was playing. I'd, I'd gone got two promotions, done really well as a loanee. And I'd come back into the building and there was four of us training up at the, in the corner. And this is under Martin O'Neill. And, and, and I'm like, well, where am I, how am I now developing? Like, I'm getting stagnated by training with the, the mushrooms, I used to call them. In the corner, keeping them, keeping uh, the bomb squad, another term that people use. And I used to be in with that group when I come back online. I'm going, well, surely if I'm going to a first team environment at, say, 18 and I'm handling it physically, and then I'm going over to the, you know, every so often go back into training because they want me to come back and I'm nowhere to be seen with the first team, but then I'm, I'm with four or five lads. I'm wasting the day. I might as well go back out with the first team of, of the lower league team. And it, the frustrating element, and we had them conversations. I was only a baby, but I was very vocal. I remember going in and seeing Martin O'Neill and saying, look, you know, I'm just like sitting around the football club doing nothing. You know, my, my coach is coming out back then. They used to smoke back then. With his, you know, where's, where's the development? And the, the care and the playing now of, of working with these lads has never been better. Um, and you, you sometimes, uh, you forget that. It's, it's an unbelievable environment to flourish, football clubs are. Academies are amazing. Football academies are amazing compared to where we grew up, and my age group, and I don't know, you know, the background, but I can imagine it was tough. It was very tough for me growing up as an, as an under a scholarship at Leicester City. Very tough. But you did it, you survived, you came through, and you flourished. You've also given a hell of a lot of stuff here now to survive, flourish, and become better people. And it's, you know, the mentalities of these young lads has to realise that, that we are here to help them and keep helping them. I think that's a huge positive that I would have loved what happened there, come back in on loan, been part of the mentality that, that I might go out again, but there's a, there's a history of this being successful, go back in the training group with them, go and then get us near the first team would be amazing for me as a player. I, I probably would have been a better player. And say you have that process that, uh, like you, know, you say, is allowing you to to prepare the players for where you're sending them out on loan, um, and you know the players. You you know you they've been coming through your academy. You've seen the progress. You've got a, a, a kind of an understanding of where they're at and what they need. So how you've got that process of always then assessing the clubs that are out there that you can send them to. Because those clubs and teams are always changing, a manager changes, and all of a sudden a, a playing style can change. What, 
how is that process for you as a as a loan manager as a club how's that is that going that you're always having an assessment and an understanding of potential loan clubs I think it's gotten a lot better I mean very similar to guy myself this is going to be my I'm going to be finishing my third year now and like I said there wasn't a handover with me whatsoever from anyone that would mean I was the first I was just um, the opportunity came and I I had to sort of develop the whole thing in myself of course with the, with the huge support of the football club uh, but it, it's getting better now. You begin to have feel for, for managers. You know how managers work. Even those are out of work right now. If you were to get an employment now, you know straight away what you get from them. And that's, that's been massive. So the environment you, you, you put the kids is important in making sure they get the best out of the loan experience. And for me, again, not playing at times is a success of a loan. Because all of a sudden, you know what young players are like, you know, of course, it's a baller, it's talented, uh, you know, don't worry, when I go to League One, I'm going to go and destroy it because I'm that. So for such a player, yes, you want them to be successful, you want them to, to, to play as many games as, as, as they can, but not playing a game could be the rude awakening they need. To then say, actually, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, while you can pass it, you can ping in 60 yards, can you do box-to-box as a central midfield player? Because that's what manager is going to need to pick it. Forget about the talent. And so it's in the education, it's in the understanding what individual clubs need. And it can be difficult at times as well, because all of a sudden you, 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 you see a very, very valuable asset that you think will come good to play for your first team someday. And from that viewpoint, you want to take him to a club on loan that plays the same system as yourself. But the club that you think is best for him doesn't need the services. So it can be a little bit problematic at times in, okay, what do you do then? Can you then get him to a club that doesn't play the same system, but with adequate conversation can still get something out of it. Or actually, is it one that we, we don't, we've got clubs for you, but we don't have the, club, the right club for you. So you stay another six months with the 23s or train with the first team, supplement that way, preparate to when the opportunity becomes available. So it's a lot of com- combination of ideas you've got to throw around, you've got to bounce with people to then come to a conclusion. And like I said, the agents, parents, and even the players will be part of the process because they have to know what's going on. Yeah, myself, um, we do a lot of uh, analytical stuff around it, which we've got guys that do that, um, which, you know, I, I will go and check them out. And the clubs, it, like I said, it's forever changing. So we, we prepare it on the on the dot sort of thing straight away. Whenever it, whenever the, the, probably the loan starts to materialise, it might happen. Um, I'm sometimes in a situation where I've prepared it for numerous bits of information and data, and the loan doesn't happen, it just doesn't happen because it, you, you, you move it down the line and, and it, it breaks down for whatever reason, player doesn't want to go or the agent doesn't want him to go there or the manager doesn't want him to go there and various different things. So there's a lot of, um, I would say, administration uh, um, and, and, and a lot of data dragging out for, for sometimes a very little reason, but you've got to do it. You know, it's part of the, the, the role for the lad and it's, it's part of making sure that you cover your back in the, the, sort of the so-called perceived wrong loans. Um, I, I'm a big believer, like I said, these loans don't go very wrong. And there's loads of opportunities for them to go right. And you, you really got to highlight why. One of my worst so-called loans in people's eyes was we did a, um, an opportunity of sending the lad away, but he, you know, he, he didn't play at all. He, you know, he struggled with that, uh, but it broke his his opinion of himself a little, and he came down to earth a lot, and it was a massive positive for the lad, and he's now progressing very well. And these are the things that sometimes that shock element of the the so called best loan for him is sometimes the best loan for us, or sometimes the best loan for the agent, and it's having that multi disciplined team of all these various people to make sure you have that this clear discussion for everybody to understand why this is happening. And I think that happens very well at our place. We have them groups, we have them meetings, and we, we crack on from moving it down the line to the next stage, to the next stage as we go along the process. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about the uh, importance of managers. Obviously, there's a lot of analysis going on, how much analysis are and, and the individual managers, but I'll just pick up on that aspect then of players not playing when they're out on loans. Um, and like I say, there's a lot of balancing going on there. You know, if you're into a sort of season-long loan and you're into the first two months and they've not played, 
clearly, I imagine the players, players, parents, depending on their age, and certainly the the agent, uh, you know, we'll probably start having the discussions of whether that is a a good place for that that player to be. Um, how are those sort of conversations handled? How is that decision made? That well, actually, in terms of his all round development, it is better for him to stay and face this challenge than 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 walk away, or vice versa. Except, except understand that. Understand that. No, actually, he probably should be playing, and he's just not the right environment for him. And right, we'll get him somewhere where you know, he's he's being judged fairly. Well, if there's ever that. That last comment, if there's ever that, then yes, yeah, it's, it's a benefit for the football club because he should always be, I think, treated fairly, you know, within the football club's realms of being able to call him back and things like that. I think there's there's a, an understanding between managers that he's the best player, he can't wait, you know, you, you can't wait to get him in the building, he's going to be this, he's going to be that. And you get a sense about certain managers and certain coaches that, that you know, they inevitably have that pathway and that's why a lot of the the data that you look through beforehand, you see how they treat the loan players. Um, so you, you kind of, again, covers your back that if a manager rings you up about a certain player and you wants to get him in, and he's, he's you got a history of not playing loan players, it's a good chance he might not play. So it, there's all them discussions to be had. And I think that the loans, when they have that opportunity of, of so-called failing, it's there's always reasons, you know. And, but again, can you minimise their mistakes before? whilst he's out and also in the review end, I think, and then learn from their mistakes and then minimise the opportunity for another player, another player, another player. It's just constantly just keep, you know, checking and resurfacing information and going through information and data that you've performed in the past to make sure you tick all the boxes for the next guy, the next guy, the next guy, because it's a forever moving process. Didn't you have that to say when you're, you're looking at those managers, you can see those managers who who possibly don't always play lone players, but is that, is that just then thrown in as a, as, a, as a challenge or something that you, okay, maybe maybe that is a club, a manager to avoid sending certain players to? Yes, I mean, again, it depends on the pedigree of the players. Uh, generally speaking, what we do is um, first loans, like I said, yes, educational. When you begin to go out on, on, your, on your second and your third loan, it becomes very highly imperative that you get game time. You don't want to go on a second and third loan and still be on the bench or for whatever reason. So the, the, the conversation becomes a little bit different with, with managers. Uh, of course, like Guy said, knowledge of the uh, modus operandi is very, very important. I did the type that keep all the players, I enjoy keeping all the players. What's their record on loan players that have come in in the past? Have they played, have they not played? If they have worth percentage, how have they been used? Is it as a sub or did they actually trust this young player to start? All this knowledge you've got to have before you begin to send players on loan. And again, if it doesn't work, you always leave your way, yourself a way out and make sure that while that time hasn't elapsed yet, sort of have a recall on the player with a view to placing them elsewhere, allow the player learn as much as they can in the process. The last thing you want to do is say to a player, well, it's, it's not your fault. Yeah, you've done everything you need to do, then it's the manager's fault. Yeah, it might be, but what, what are you learning? What else can you learn while you're there? Because every opportunity, every day is a learning opportunity. And if we're not careful, we we suck up to these players and they throw their hands in the air. Well, manager doesn't like me. Well, I noticed it from the first day. The, the, the way he said hello to me, I knew I knew I made the wrong move and all those sort of things. And the guy is laughing, he knows. <laughs> you, must have, you must have heard everything. <laughs> I said that to managers. I know he didn't like me. I was the same when I was out alone. I walked past him, he never said, hello, I'm, 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 I need to get out of this club. <laughs> Exactly. So it's in the knowledge. You've got to do your, your, your due diligence to sort of making sure all these things are ironed out before the players go out on them. And if, you know, hopefully they, they'll be honest enough to sort of let you know that, well, this way I see him, he's not going to play for me every week. This is what's going to happen. As long as we know that we are great power, happy days. I have a question here for you both guys from um, Julie Goddard. Um, Julie asked, how, do you often get contacted to take under 18, 23 players on loan? You know, is there that level where clubs will just ask in general about, about players or come to you either specifically wanting to know if a player is on loan? 
for me, it's um, it's both uh, very much so. It's what you got available is, is, is especially in April. They're, they're the sorts of calls that you get. Um, maybe January, the targeting. December, the targeting that sort of thing. They're starting to target who they want out of that twenty-three group. Um, but yeah, definitely a general conversation of, and and it's a negotiation trick, isn't it? It's well, we like him, but we might take him, or you know, and all these different things you learn about the, the the way people speak to you sometimes on the phone of they don't want to show too interest in one of your, your the major players within your twenty-three group that can go out on loan, and they kind of make out like they're not really that interested, but they take him if the deal is right. You know things like that. So there's all them conversations to be had and understood, and it's definitely uh, both opportunities that that materialises for me as a as a recruiter. Yeah, very very similar again to, to to Guy. I mean, you get both. There are some there are some clubs that that, that are very much aware of your players. Yeah, they are ones that just um, pick up the phone and ask whether you go certain positions. And when you mention names, like okay, yeah, well, oh, we know of him, or actually. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we didn't know he was going to be available for long. Let's do a bit more due diligence. I mean, I will come back to you and stuff like that. Such are just for me it will be last minute. If we don't, if I don't, if I can't find anything for the player, then by all means, this is what's going on. This, this is how they've approached us. So be mindful of what we're going to get. We're not sure what we're going to get. We'll try and speak to them and then try and get something more structured. But generally speaking, the ones that I know come to watch the boys, I've got pretty, pretty knowledge of them, and they're asking me specifically. Is this player going to be available for long because we need him for so, 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 a lot of details on the player. Then I know you know the player, you know you're, what you're getting and you know how to get the best from, I mean, from, from the player you're going to be getting. So those one generally are the ones we, we, we tend to sort of um, pay a lot of attention to. With that, with that question also, it's, I think, my, again, my personal view is, is the hunger and desire of the club I, in preparation to a loan, uh, when we're preparing a loan, you want to know the urgency. Um, you want to know the, the the understanding of the player from that club, how much work they've actually done. You want to know who goes to watch on a regular basis at the 23 games. You want to know what sort of clubs are constantly watching. So when them, I suppose, loans open up, you kind of know that they're in the, the, the vicinity of that player and they, they like him. And it just gives you that, that again, reassurance that, that this loan could work out because they've done 10, 15 games on the kid. You know, they know all about him. They know what he's about. And, and then when you speak to the manager, moving it down the line, you've then got, well, I want him to play an eight and I want him to break into the box and I want him to trap back in and, you know, go to the, the, the deepest deepest midfielder to make sure he's covering the back there. And, you know, and all these different images that they'll send you and video clips that they'll send you of how you want him to play, you know they've done their work. And which is fantastic because you know that then he's going to probably nine times out of 10, they've done that work into him that you'll probably go pay a, 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 a maximum, you know, a minimum amount of games. You know, you know he's going to get some opportunities there because the manager's wasted a lot of time getting all prepared and he doesn't even know the figures yet. I mean, on, on the flip side of that, then there's um, those clubs that you contact direct. I don't know whether there is a group of clubs that you have. I know, say, there's certainly one group it seems to be as an increasing trend in football where you have partnerships with clubs and tends to be clubs where where Premier League clubs are regularly sending a high number of players to that club. But then is there also other clubs that you can identify and know or a manager that you think a player would certainly fit with and, and you would go direct to that club to see if they would take a player on loan? Yeah, most most definitely. There are a handful of clubs that you that are pre-identified, that players, I mean, from within the club will go to and develop because we understand how they work. We understand them, I mean, the, the manager, the system, the club, and everything. Yes, we are partner clubs. Yes, there are a handful of those clubs. But again, we we are still very much open-minded to new ones, because yes, the ones you're working with or you might have been working with before now are such that you you try them out initially before you find out they work. So you want to leave that. Uh, don't open a little bit, uh, but again, with a lot more guidance in, as regards the nitty-gritty of what will happen when this boy actually go out on loan. Because the last thing you want to do is send the player on loan with a view to sort of acquiring another added club, and and the loan fails. You know, football is only for a short period of time, and you want to sort of make the most of every opportunity for for the players. Yeah, we have a similar similar model. 
Um, we, we send players to Belgium because that's our sister club. We have a great relationship with them there and I'd like to go there and play and find out about Belgian football and, again, the types that, that go over there. We've had, a, we've had various success, but we've also had you know, various um, learning opportunities for them as well. And it's been good. It's been very, very good. Obviously, difficulty with travelling this year, but I've been over so many times and had a fantastic relationship with the club. But targeting other clubs, we all have networks. It's important you have a network um, as a loans manager. And, you know, I will use my network to highlight and identify certain clubs to Leicester City to say, look, these are good guys, good people. They'll, they'll say what they, that they originally intend to do with the lad. We'll have a relationship. We've done that with Rotherham this year. Um, and he's gone and done, you know, very, very well last year with Rotherham as well. And it just so happens that, you know, I know the staff very deeply and I know what they'll deliver and they've delivered it, you know, and, and the lads had, I suppose, mixed opportunities. But Daniel Leveson went there and they got promoted with him. And now he's back in the championship with, with Preston and Hurst is there struggling to get in. But again, it's a good eye opener for him, but what it takes to be a championship player. And he's only a young lad and there's plenty of opportunities for him next season to go and progress again. So, there's all these different combinations you can have. And I think network's massive in this job and having that conversations with people and being able to pick up the phone to say, look, we've got six or seven lads available. You know, I know you want to send her off, but can we deal with our guy going into you? Because I think he'll develop under you. Is, is a conversation I have on a regular basis. So um, you're getting those players out on loan. Um, uh, you mentioned, I think in your presentation, Guiding just the importance of just spending time with the players and getting to know them. Um, it's probably there's a certain cohort that probably has made it life easier for you with them that you've known them since they were nine, ten, that you were coaching them and you've seen them come through. And then I guess there's other players who you're sort of yeah, getting getting to see for the first time. How how are you building up that relationship with them so that ultimately they feel comfortable picking up a phone or chatting yeah. to you. I have uh, my, my phone's on. They can call me. They know that. Um, I instantly make contact. I've been in dressing rooms. I've, you know, thought that the staff are not happy with me and I, I can understand them different dynamics. So I can have them conversations where it's going well, and, you know, we're pushing for promotion. And I think that that's one of my caps that I've got. Um, not just blowing wind to me sort of thing. It's, it's very important that you've got to, a different cap to keep putting on every time you're in different conversations with people. And that's why we said at the start of the, the I was, I think, um, webinar about where this, where this job can lead you. Because you, you are, you put on various caps. It's very, very much a management um, job and very much dealing with different people at constant end. So I'm used to that, if I'm honest. I've been like that since I was a kid. It's, it's not uh, something I can't go and do, pick up a phone to a stranger and make a call or go and shake someone's hand in a room I've never met and I've opened up a conversation there. So I think that the lads know that from me and staff now point players to me to go and, you know, instigate conversations because maybe they can't do it. And, and I start breaking down barriers pretty much instantly when they first set eyes on this big, bold-headed fella bouncing up towards them. So I agree with you, you guys. I think ultimately it's, 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 a, it's a trust thing. <laughs> yeah, and that one too. <laughs> I think ultimately it's, it's, it's a trust thing. I mean, the, yeah. the, the players must trust you that you can do the best by, by them. And again, even if I say so, I mean, I'm sure you will agree as well. Playing, having a playing career helps you massively because the, you can relate not just to managers, not just to players, but to everyone in football and chuck around football and what these guys need on the back end of you. Actually, I've done what, what I'm talking about. So I know what it's like. So when, you, when, you, when you pick up the phone, people respect you. Players these days don't generally pick up the phone to you, so you've got to make sure you call them. You got to. It is. It's the modern world. They rather text you than, than talk. Yeah, there are players in the changing room these days who don't even speak to each other. They, everybody is there on the phone with the, with the with the thing in their ears and talking. That's the nature of the world now. You've got to make sure you drag stuff out of them, speak to them regularly, and then make sure you you you, you draw out what you want to draw out and have them say what they need to say. Because a lot of the time they are like, well, they're too cool for school. Yeah, I know, I'm alright. I didn't play this week, but it's okay. No, no, it's not okay. You need to sort of wake up and smell the coffee. You see, you did the nail on the head. There's lots of um, there's lots of things in that that's very, very true. And I think the, the the conversation side of the modern world, the Generation Z, and 
all these different sorts of terminologies around them is you do need to make them have eye contact you do need to make them you know have contact with you and, and i will i will get at them if they don't have contact with me on on a conversation on the phone on a text i mean you know if i can't get hold of them that, to me that's still old school rude you know i'm there for them i'm, I'm their i'm their boy i'm, I'm going to help them as much as possible they they don't have to ever doubt that but i tell you what you need to call me back that's as simple as that there's there's, there's a great opportunity and i'm going to help you and my my experiences of all these mistakes i've made could be the difference between you changing into a successful premier league player and that's why i think that when i've had them ups and downs in my career and also lots of good good positives where we can share together I think that's where the, the trust comes from. And, and I think that that's also, you know, from a manager's point of view, which I've been, from a coach's point of view, which I've been, from a head of recruitment's point of view, which I've been, you know, I, I think the mixture of jobs that are out there, it's great experience for this role. And it's a great understanding of, I've got to now go and speak to the board, I've got to go and speak to Brendan Rogers. Got to, you know, you, you chucked in conversations when you go to a football club that you just didn't expect to materialise. And that's some of the things I've missed. And I don't know if you have, but some of the things I've missed this season from being out of the building a lot, probably more so than ever. I don't need to be in the building a lot, but probably not being in the building enough to have them spontaneous conversations with first team staff, board members, the CEO, the doctors, because you learn so much when you're in the building as well. And, and remote's great because, you know, I've spent so much fantastic time with my family. I also need to educate myself in them spontaneous conversations with the players again. You know, even when the first team players start asking you when they train with the 23 sometimes, you know, is there an opportunity for me? And you're like, I can't believe one of the players has asked me. And then them sorts of pats on the back for yourself need to be needed from this role as well. I think the big thing that, that, that comes out of that is, is honesty. You've got, to, you've got to be honest with the kids. With, with, with the kids. Like I said in my presentation, they don't always accept it initially, but I mean, they, they're not daft. They, they'll go home, they'll reflect on it, and they will uh, actually say the truth. Because if you're too friendly with them and you want to make them feel good about themselves, you, ultimately you're not helping them. And they, they want to, they should want to trust you. Because let's face it, a lot of the, a lot of the players we deal with and we sell out on loan, the under 23, the academy players, majority of them will not come back and play for the first team. So the moment they go out, they, they disengage with the club straight away. And that's why they won't pick up the phone to speak to you. That's why they won't want to engage. Well, I'm on my way out now, so I better be the best I can be for this for this club. Well, while you're doing that, I get that. I'm not going to turn around and then say to you, oh, you know what? I spoke to Nuno yesterday, and he was asking about you. No, no, he wasn't. I'm not going to tell you that. But while you're on that journey, what can we do to help you, support you, make your life a little bit better? Because if you speak to a lot of those guys, where you are at the moment on loan, they wish they had the support you're having right now. So you better make the most of it. And it's about that honesty, being true to them, such that they can trust you and then know that actually you mean well. Have them go through the journey again, helps. And, and, and that, that's, that for me is, is the best way forward. When you've, when you've got that level of trust, you're having those conversations, I'd say the first level of that, I mean, what are, what are the typical problems you find yourselves dealing with, with the players? What are the, what are the, the blocks that they're finding that they struggle to deal with when they're out on loan? Well, game time. Sorry, sorry, guy. Oh, I, think, I think game time is massive. Every player wants to play. So when, when the game time becomes available, when they get the love from the, from the, from the learning club, everything is fine. Uh, yes, I might be on my way out, but actually I've always known I'm a good player. Now I'm playing, now I'm enjoying myself. Fine. The big problem starts when that doesn't happen. So I, I can't get a good game time with the, with the, with the first team. I'm, I, I'm alone. I can't get game time as well. The whole world is not fair. And that's where the problem actually starts. And it's how you then deal with that, how you then support them through that process. I've had a conversation with your agent. I've had, I've had a conversation, conversation with the manager. This is what he thinks, actually. He might not tell you. Actually, matter of fact, you go and ask him. Go and speak to the manager. You want to play? Let him tell you the one, two, three things you need to add to your game to give yourself the best opportunity. So that you know, don't always rely on me. So there, there are so many different scenarios you can paint depending on the individual. I think the key is knowing the individual and knowing what works for them, how they can develop very quickly. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the, 
the more you know the player, like we spoke about before, the more you can he buys into you, you buy into him, the more there's an opportunity there to, to develop this loan very, very quickly. Without that trust and, and rapport, as they say, and communication skills that you've got to have, you know, you, you, there's going to be lots of barriers that materialise very quickly. And also with the clear communication and the clear understanding, there's going to be a lot of barriers you break down very quickly. And it's, but it's got to be a two-way thing. You know, you've got to chase the lad sometimes. And I've done that. You know, I've travelled down to to have a brief meeting at half time to tell him straight that, you know, you cannot ignore me. I'm here to help you. And he's gone, oh, well, I didn't expect to be. I went, I'm here all the time. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's have this meeting. And he was amazed by it. But it's it's very important that you have that that the club involvement and make sure you, you cover your personal back with the staff and understanding your, your, your pathways, you're going to do it to take you to the next stage. But it's very much all played around the player's centre anyway. And, and made sure that the player care and involved and there's, there's all these things that, that need to be sorted beforehand before you go out that this is what the pitch is going to look like and we I think we do that in abundance with the information that we share with them. Don't you find get that balance right with the these players um they're out on loan um probably certainly in early stages of the loan be a little bit insecure um and, and if they're not playing they're probably blaming everyone else but themselves, where do you get that balance of, right, well, probably I need you to realise that it is you and you're the one who needs to change, but at the same time, you, know, you still want them to have a certain level of confidence and belief in what they're doing. And ultimately, there may also be those who who need to blame other people because that's what fuels them. Yeah, sure. A lot of people, if they, if they find an enemy, that's, they use that as a motivation and a drive as a driver anyway. Yeah, yeah, the mental side of that is, I think, with the players, I use short, sharp shots. And I use short, sharp shots of, look, this is how it looks to me. I'm looking from the outside, looking in, and you're not doing this, this, and this. And the coach says, you're not doing this, this, and this. And it's short and sharp. It doesn't have to be long and, and you know, overly, um, even intrusive rather than aggressive. And I think that when you're sitting there telling these lads a few home truths, short and sharp, and move on very quickly, I think they start to realise. And, and if, again, if you do it two weeks, three weeks, five weeks, ten weeks down the line, you're still coming up with these problems. We highlighted this at the start. It's now week five. It's now week ten. And it's still materialising. What else have you changed as a player to make this better? And again, data and, and analytical stuff um, and video clips are fantastic to show players body language, look at the way you warmed up. Would I pick you in that team the way you warmed up that way? Rolling off the bench, needed to be asked constantly by the coach to get off the bench. You know, then you roll out of the bench and literally walk and take ages to get past the manager. And then you walk to the bottom of the corner flag and your body language is all wrong and your shoulders are slant. And then you start to stretch. Am I bringing you on? No, I'm not. So where do you want to go with this? You know, where, whose fault is that? Yours or the manager's? He's looking over at the bench, wanting to bring someone on, and you can't even get off the bench. Probably got too many sweets in your pocket and your phone. So there's all these things to have them conversations about. And I think it's very important, like I said, you, you, you set your stall out early doors with what it might look like. They feel comfortable. That reduces the anxiety. And the opportunity then to learn and grow together becomes very easier. And, and very easy, should I say. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with you. I couldn't agree more with you, the uh, guy. Uh, and, and the issue of the warm-up thing is something what I pick up a lot when I go out to watch go watch games. And as a matter of fact, deliberately I go early doors and then go and see how you warm up, without you, regardless of whether you're playing or not. And when you're mm -hmm. on the bench, are you are you the first to pick up the beef to warm up? Are you waiting for others to do it? And you know, you're big time Charlie, or you're you're just on loan at this small club because I'm coming from the Premier League. No, no, actually, you've how many games have you played for the Premier League club you're coming from? You're still an apprentice. You need to sort of end the right. So all this conversation is gonna be brutal sometimes, and sometimes it's gonna be gentle because it's about that support, not just the stake all the time, it's how you then deliver it. The conversation we were having before for me is in two parts. If you're not playing. Can we identify why? Can we show you data like guys like guys said? Can we show you clips? Are you seeing who is ahead of you? Who, why do you think he's playing ahead of you? Are you are you watching? What does he do that you don't do? You know, you go and assess that yourself. I know, but I'll let you watch it. Then come and tell me. 
okay, well, maybe then ask the manager, do you, does he value those attributes he's got? Because you're a, you're a bowler, you can play all the football, but while he may not be able to play football, it might be a little more hardworking than yourself. So if hard work, which is non-negotiable in football these days, is what is required, go and speak to the manager. Then how, you, how, how do we then help you put that in place? The other side of it for me is, for, even for the guys that are playing, they need checking as well because oh, you know I told you I mean I can work I can just walk into a league one side I mean come on I'm, I'm playing football no, no doubt uh, actually you're playing right now but these are the things I've seen in your game that you still need to sort of improve because don't forget it's a developmental program and if you don't do that enough the manager might drop you but actually and if he doesn't drop you you have a good time in league one do you want to play in league one football or do you want to play championship because from championship level this is what I'm saying. So it's different layer of education. Otherwise, when they get too comfortable and they're playing, uh, yeah, then everything is easy. But you know, or you must know within your group where they can get to. But if they don't push themselves, or if we don't, we don't push them, they never achieve achieve that um, that status. They, they get cozy, as we say in football. I've got a question. How, how do you um, find clubs' responses to you when you're telling them um, various things about? how it should look for him as a player. I, I find some, some responses quite spiky, I call it, you know, from clubs. So I, tur I turned up a, a few clubs and asked to watch training and see how my player develops under that and build basically more rapport with the club as well. And uh, I, I then took the, the, the laptop with me and spoke about his style of play in regards to the way he's been playing at, at the club. And the manager wanted to sit in on it and, and terrorise the video. And uh, that, which I find quite funny actually because I thought well that's brilliant but I've also got to develop a player for Leicester City and I ended up sitting there getting told off by the manager that, that I uh, didn't think and didn't think the video through and, and I was going okay all right which I challenged him after the player left obviously <laughs> but it was uh, it was a it was a very uh, educating time for me that, that the loan club thought that they controlled the player instead of the loan, obviously, player being what our player, you know, and I found it very yeah. difficult um, at the time, but then I reflected on it and found it quite an enjoyable experience from the, the whole aspects of the manager feeling threatened by my coaching ability, which was quite good. It's always a tricky experience. I mean, I had a few of those as well. Managers, for some reason, always feel, well, who are you to tell me how to run my team? Who are you to tell me who to pick? And it's always about the ego and, and what have you. Or, yeah, why, well, how dare you ask me how he's not, why he's not playing? No, I have a right, to, even if he's playing well, I have a right to sort of pick who I want to pick based on who I play against and what have you. And they will come up with all kinds of defenses. And like, like rightly said, it's always my go back to them as well. At the end of the day, I've got a player to, to sort of develop here. And you job. took this player, exactly. You took this player and you promised X, Y, Z, what, what's going on? Yeah, I know you've got a job to do and I respect that. But I've got, similarly, I've got a job to do as well. How can we help this kid? And again, based on back and forth, it becomes a question of do you then leave the player there to, to sort of gain what is there to do? Or actually, do you, are you start looking at January window with a view to recalling and moving the player on? Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, interesting. Uh, some interesting conversations that uh, you 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 have then with the managers who then are on loan again. Another level of when you're assessing your players' development, where it's the player, where it's the environment they're in. It's kind of always a, a constant process that you're you're, you're going through. Um, and some of those sound like some of the the typical challenges you have. What would be some of the not so typical challenges that you've you've faced with players out on loan. I think the, the movement of the management and the staff. Um, you know, the, I had one player who had four managers in one month and didn't play for all four of them, but still said he was the best player in the camp. <laughs> and um, you know, trying to convince him there, but all these all these various things happen. You try to have these discussions with these lads and. I've not been shot by football much. You know, it's just a crazy world anyway. So I think if you're, if you're prepared and organised, I think things don't really catch you out that much because you kind of know that there's always a spanner in the works anyway at, at lower league football. So you, you kind of make sure that you, the lads go in there and play a lot for themselves and a lot for the opportunity to go and get game time. So if, they, if they've got that mentality, that when things are changing around them within the, the, the club, 
they, they can carry on and long live the new king and crack on. Yeah, I think you just mentioned it there. The biggest one is always the, the, the change in management. I've had players go out on loan and played almost every minute of the first half of, of the season only for the manager to change. And all of a sudden, it became surplus requirement with the manager himself coming out to say, actually, he's a very, very good player. But I've just come in now. I've got a job to do. I need to bring in my own players. And I can't, I've got players here that have got contracts. So unfortunately, your player have got to go back. Yeah. It's just uh, there's, so, there's so many there's so many things you can think about. And wh what do you say to the player? No, actually, what's going on? I'm doing well. Yeah, you're doing well, but this is what's going on. Again, it goes back to that honesty. Don't I don't lie to players. This is what has been said. This is what I've done to to try and mitigate it. There's no way out. Unfortunately, we have to sort of go back to the drawing board and reassess. Find another club. So the the biggest one is always the change in, in management. I think then finally, let's just squeeze in a final question then um, around your own ambitions and where this role, the, the, the kind of player manager pathways role, I mean, what does that, that feed into? I mean, you know, we've seen other, other people who've had this role move into some pretty decent roles over the last kind of couple of years, but it is kind of a new role, as you've said, Say you're a groundbreaker at Wolves, and you kind of mentioned you see that pathway is kind of sporting director it is is that role where you you know you're almost there. You're kind of facilitating within within a within a multidisciplinary team. Yeah, well, I mean it's um, it's an interesting role. You, you you learn a lot in a short space of time, and you continue learning. You know, uh, guys mentioned it in one of in his presentation as well. Networking is massive. You, you you get to sort of know people. You get to know managers. You get to understand very quickly uh, what makes them tick, how they work. Uh, do your own due diligence with regards the the person, their 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 modus operandi, the, the the support network around them. Do they speak to do they speak to players? Do they speak to or do, do, do they leave the assistants to, to do it? And you know, just have a general feel for it. But again, it's in the education as well for myself, especially of how clubs work. So rather than just be stuck at Wolves doing whatever, actually you go out to see, or you see how the clubs have it and say, okay, actually that, that's good. You can, you can make that recommendation. Or actually, I didn't know we are this good at a club. We're doing something unbelievable in terms of how we do play because I've been here, I've been there, I've been to different levels and I've not seen that. And that's very, very unique to us. And you take all of those back. And again, even with the players, we in, in, how do you then have them have the club values in a, in a fitting standout scenario whereby they fit into the environment they go to, but they, they, they still exhibit some of the values, that we call, some of the core values we have at the football club, because I think that's, that, that's, that's key, that's, that's massive. Contacts are always going to be very, very important. But again, it, it prepares you for what I want to do. I don't know what guy's um, ambitions are, but I want to be a sporting director with the opportunity. Uh, the right opportunity was to, was to come on. This is a good preparatory ground. I speak to agents on, on, a, on a weekly basis of our players, deliberating about contract. No, they should be on this. You, no, why should they be on that? Actually, this is the level it's doing at the moment. Why do you want to? Why do you want to also pay wages for the next level? And you know, of course, they will always try agents. It's, it's always roller coaster of back and back and forth, and you learn a lot in the process. This um, for me, this role takes you into all forms of management within the football club. There's so many different aspects of the management of players, the management of agents, the management within the football club, you know, of staff, uh, organising staff to do things, for, you know, learning, learning that angle. I've done similar roles. It's very much a recruitment role, uh, understanding pathways, talent ID. Um, so it, it can, it can take you into multiple jobs within a, within a club, um, I think inevitably it points you in the sporting director's role, the director of football role, uh, because it is, it's, a, it's an overseeing a multidisciplinary team and then it's overseeing a load of players and it's recruitment. It ticks all the boxes of being a director of football negotiation. Um, but again, it, like I said, it can lead into football management because you, you're still doing the analytic, you're still doing the data with the lads, you're still doing the, 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 the planning and preparing the sessions, you're still doing the uh, management of the players on and off the pitch. And even if, you know, you had the coach, the first team's coach, you've got a management team for a football club. So all these different things can, can materialise, but definitely pointing in that direction. For me, I, I'm just enjoying the role. I ain't 100% uh, 
um, on the, the the angle of sporting director yet, um, because I think I'm very young. Um, I think I've got a lot of experience, stuff, but, but I think I'm very young, and I'd want to go into a project that was based on my ideas of recruitment and my ideas of, of how you run a football club. So you'd have to get that someone to buy into you for that. Um, but definitely I'd still like to experience the, the management of a football club and the club management of a football club in its various different departments and have some sort of imprint. Of not the old fashioned manager, but very much a modern thinking club manager. So I overlook a lot of the stuff and, and very much, it, you know, employing good people to do good jobs. You know, I'm, I'm I go into football clubs, like you said, and seen a lot of football clubs and worked for a lot of football clubs. So I've seen a lot of positive and negative. I've worked with a lot of bad managers. I've worked with a lot of good managers. And some of the ones that, that uh, have been in, in imprinted on me, Martin O'Neill, the, the biggest name, but there's also stuff that I think he could have been better at. And, and that's me saying that as an experienced person now. I probably said that as a young, unexperienced kid as well. <laughs> so there's there's loads of things that you learn from this role. And I think it's just a benefit for the for the club to have this sort of role for a lot of other departments as well, because they can tap into our experiences and they can tap tap into our backgrounds and and it adds something different to say someone who hasn't got that player background or that coaching background. They can they may have just come into player care from their HR and their player. Um, their, their schooling background. So there's all these things that, that, that other departments should come to us for. Sam, so, finally, um, so just in terms of skill set, I mean, is there a particular skill that you've found has developed more on on the job than that you one that you may not have had before or certainly wasn't one of your strengths before that you've found has evolved because of this role? Um, yes, I think... Um, Leadership, because I mean, from from playing football as a professional football player, you're always looking at yourself. Of course, you play in the, in the team, but football itself, I mean, my definition of football itself is learning to look at yourself in the, in the collective. Yes, you you, you play in the, you, you play sports and football is is a collective sport, but again, it's about you as an individual against who you're you're you're, you're up against, and you've you've gone through that all through your career. Then to, to, on, the, to on the back end of that. To begin to do this, I've been done a bit of coaching myself to see how, to, how you lead people, how you then begin to think outside the box to sort of make sure they get what they want. To actually leading people to sort of, I mean, I, I, mean, I showed you the, the presentation of the team we work with, from the psychologists to the coaches, to, to the specific coach, to the sports scientists, all these guys is going to manage to us making sure the individual gets what they want before you begin to sort of pick up the phone to sort of speak the clubs. And it, it's in that leading that and making sure no stone is left on time. You haven't forgot anything, as well as speaking to people and being out there to sell the club. Because you're gonna sell the club, you're gonna sell the player. Uh, that that's um, sales speech, if you like, is something I never had before. I was always been, I've always been a very very introverted person, and that to sort of come out of my shell, to sort of lend over time and begin to 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 to, to do that. So it's, it's a lot of arms to to it. It's a lot of things you learn in the process towards preparing you for me, wherever that takes you, really. I think exactly that, understanding myself more. Uh, I think that's something I've had to deal with since finishing playing. Um, maybe some of the stuff that got me where I was in football, playing, would could be quite destructive in other different sorts of uh, departments within football. So I've made sure that uh, I've honed my skills and tightened my skills up in, in um, my honesty. And um, knowing when to say certain things, when not to say certain things. And, and I've also understood that, you know what, I've, I've got to manage myself better within different environments, which I, I, I'm okay at anyway. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm good at mixing with people, but I don't want to be um, uncomfortable in situations where I might feel, you know, out my depth or, or um, I'd say uh, exposed with the wrong sort of, mentality when I walk into say a dressing room environment or when I walk into a boardroom you've got to make sure that your mindset's right for them different very different times and that's where I've learned to really be mindful of me as a human and, and mindful of me as a, as a person just because I, you know my emotions were running high when I was a player and you can't come in and start pointing fingers at people when you're a coach 
and you can't do it when you're in the boardroom. And so there's all them different mentalities that need to be learned. And this is this is a great job for that because you, you're constantly dealing with different types of people and, and having to pull rabbits out of the hat sometimes, thinking on your feet and just making sure you can deliver when Brendan Rogers speaks to you in an instant conversation when you walk past you in the coffee room at Leicester Six training ground to then when you're in a boardroom with John talking about the futures of the players and he's dropping questions on you. you know, you've got to be at it. Brilliant. It's like then, on that note, yeah, say a big thank you to uh, to you, Guy, uh, for, your, for your honesty and then uh, yeah, giving us a nice insight into what the, the role involves uh, and where it can take you. No, thanks for asking me on. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Great, great insight as well from how Wolves do it and how, how, how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> how I try to do it. And then, yeah, for, and for you, say, it's good that you have sort of grown then into this, uh, this leadership role and sort of this openness of being able to speak in front of people. And uh, yeah, it's been enjoying, it's been very enjoyable hearing what you've had to say today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, again, it's every every opportunity to learn is it, always taken. I've learned one or two things from Guy as well. Uh, obviously, we speak, but again, we've never. I'm not sure we've ever gone into the, the nitty gritty of how you do your your job. But again, I've kept one or two things in there that we use going forward, and, that, and that's the nature of and the beauty of the job. You're always learning. You're always trying to add layers to it. And thank you for organising, Steve, as well. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you.